after flat plate and cylinder we turn to sphere that's another common geometry that a lot of real geometries can be approximated to that's why we study these shapes and we're going to talk about both natural convection and forced convection over a sphere first let us observe what we mean by natural convection over a sphere so we will observe what happens over a heated sphere by using an older style light bulb that's here so this is the bulb and and that heats the surrounding air so the surrounding hot air then rises that's what we want to see how do we see it again we use these neutrally buoyant bubbles so these are neutrally buoyant meaning uh, they are neither heavier nor lighter than air and um, we also put in a a, a black a sort of a shade before that uh, so it, the shade would um, stop the camera from being um, completely blinded uh, by the light from there so this kind of bulb older style bulb they uh, waste a lot of heat and it is that heat that um, kind of increases the glass temperature and that is what we mean by the heated sphere so we can think of some surface temperature ts here and t infinity is the room temperature now the the room air air is not meant to be moving in reality of course it, there's always some movement but air is not moving the only reason for movement is when it gets heated up at the surface and so how do you expect these bubbles to move it would be nice if you can uh, think for a second and and kind of um, try to gauge how you're going to um, see this in the video So what we just saw is idealized here around a perfect sphere. So this, what you saw is this is your heated uh, bulb. And um, the hot air, the temperature, surface temperature Ts is greater than the room temperature. This is my room temperature and and so the air, heated air rises like that and that's how the heat transfer happens so for this we expect the a correlation with grashof number because there is no there's no kind of u infinity that we have so it's not forced convection so the correlation should be in terms of grashof number which is exactly what we see so for natural convection we have this correlation where Rayleigh number is in terms of grashof and Prandtl and uh, Nussel number again is h times d over k of fluid and like any other uh, correlation there's a range for which over which this is valid 
So this Rayleigh number, Grashof time Prandtl, have to be less than 10 to the 5 uh, to be able to use this equation because those are the conditions for which it was done. And, and also Prandtl number needs to be close to 1, which is the case for air. And also you notice that D, uh, not unexpectedly, is the characteristic length for a sphere. So for forced convection, which would be something like this, so either airflow with some velocity or it can be airflow from the bottom or from the top. They all mean the same thing for uh, forced convection. So for forced convection, because we have a velocity, we expect to see correlations in terms of Reynolds number, which indeed it is. And also, just like in the past, this is for a range that uh, we can use. So the experiments were done for this range of condition, Prandtl number in this range and the Reynolds number. In. So we, when you use it, when we use it, we have to make sure that we are in this range to be able to use that equation. And that concludes a sampling of all the equations that we will see in this class.